Hello Stamper! Welcome to French's video. I'm France Martin, independent demonstrator with Stamping Up at FrenchyStamps.com. Today it's a box, a card, or pop-up, whatever we want to name it. So um, I get a belly band. I use the clouds to put at the top. I was debating what I would use and I wanted to keep my chicken there. So I'm using a Berta chick for um, the stamp set. The design you see paper, it's the New Horizon. My favorite in the new uh, catalog spring 2022. So let me share how I get inspired for that. So Don Robel from my team sent me this Christmas card. And so this just slide out. Slide better there. And watch for it. Voila! Is that fun? And it stand right up. So she write in the back. I forgot to do that in the back there. I'm going to add a little chicken in the back and then finish that. But let me share how to do this. So first thing you want to start with, I'm going to give you the size of the cards, the measurement of the card stock. So the big, so this one, let me open this one here. So you could do it without a belly band too, but that keep it tight when you mail it. And this fit in a regular envelope. <clears throat> uh, let me grab an envelope here. So you see, it will fit in a regular envelope. It's, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm 99% sure you will have to use extra postage due to the thickness of it but it's a regular size A2 card. Voila, voila. So with the belly band, it would be the borderline, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna need extra postage. So let me remove that out of here, voila. And then when you open it up, see the happy birthday. So, so cute. And that paper looked like he's in on the range, right? With that chicken, I just love it. So let's get started. First piece of paper I'm using for the base, I am using um, crumb cake. You're going to need 10 by 8 and a half. With the 10 at the top, you're going to score this at 2 inch, score at 3 and a half, score 6 and a half, 8. Now, don't worry about marking everything. I will have all measurement on my blog and you get the direct link below. Now, you're going to flip this right here. You're going to have the eight and a half at the top. You're going to score at one and a half. And then you're going to score at seven. That is it with this piece. Now, for the belly band, uh, Don uh, was saying, you know, score at two and six and a half. I don't like to score the second one. I just like to score the first one. So that way I can adjust the thickness of the belly band because you don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose, neither. So this way, depending on how much stuff you're going to put, that can play a factor. So I would say just score at two and one inch by nine and a half. So one by nine and a half. Oh, this one it's more. I just want one. And the reason mine I just want one inch is because of the clouds, the width of them this way I can cover the front of the belly band. Okay. So one by nine and a half. Now this piece here measure and this here if you notice eight and a half by ten really a card measure to eleven so you just cut one inch there so that's what I'm using so you don't use half of this really so this is going to measure one by four and and a half. Is it four and a half? Yes. One by four and a half. So it's a little bit more than half the strip. So one by four and a half. You're going to score this at um, one and a half. 
two and four. So one and a half, two and four. Now I like to score once and then we're going to trim this. So the one inch here, we're going to cut this at half inch. So then we get both of our strip for the pop up. Voila. I find it easier to score once and on a piece like this. Now you're going to take <clears throat> this and we want to cut the, the one, the score at the eight and a half there, the score going down. We're going to cut that to the center and to the center. So you can use your scissors or you can put this here. Now I put my finger here so I know, okay, I have to stop about there. Now I'm going to lift this, put that there, and do the same thing. So give me about where to stop and I'm going to finish the rest with my scissors. And we're going to go there, put that at the center line here. And lift up. If you're wondering where the blade stop, if you see, you get your line right there on the trimmer here. That's where the blade it's aligned with. That's to where it goes. Now let's remove this. Now we're going to use a ruler and a score thing. Let me move this here so I see where I'm at. Okay. So from this here, we want to keep, I could take my um, my paper cutter. I'm just going to use scissors. You keep about a half inch, cut this off, okay? Where we cut here, cut that. Keep about half inch. Remove that. Even if it's a little bit more, a little bit less, it's okay, okay? Now we get that. Now you want to make sure you cut all the way to your score line. So just go all around and check that. And one thing I find make a big difference, it's you want to cut the score com line completely. This one here, I went on the outside of the, the score instead of the inside. I have to trim that. And the reason why I have to trim that, if you still have the score line there, it won't to buckle, buck up, and then it don't fold nice your box. See, it was just really one air, but that make a difference. Now, on those four little tabs here that I said to keep about half inch, now you're going to take those little tab. And you're going to remove diagonal to the score line. So that's going to make it easier when we're going to come to glue and to fold our box. So just remove this diagonal. Do this on four. Oops, this one it's a little stubborn here. Here we go. You want to do that on both uh, little tab on each side. Here we voila. And see, that is it. Oh, I'm looking at my desk here. I wanted to show you way back. I checked the video. I'm going to put it at the end of this video. Way back in 2011, I did a video that it's very similar to this. It was this size though. So it's, you know, not the size of a regular envelope. So it go this way, and I had something that pop out in this. This was my sample. But this here, the beauty of this, see, it's no glue. It's all just the way it's folded, and it's stuck under and so on. So I will, oops, I will attach the video at the end of this one. So you can see how this one does so it's the same about the same thing except this one because it's longer and it's exactly the size of a card um, and we have to uh, trim some uh, thing maybe we could manage it but it would be maybe thicker 
So now what we're going to do, the center part it's three inch. So we have to make a little mark at the center. So not from your tip because that you don't know exactly sure. So for in between each score, score line that measure three inch, make a little mark. I'm just using my uh, score there at one and a half. Now from the score line to the corner here, you're going to put that here and score and do the same thing on the other side. So put this in the center and score. Now you're going to reinforce this and reinforce this and it should align very good. See? Boom. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So you want to mark that at one and a half and then you're going to go from, I like to use the smaller score. I'm sorry if my head go in the, to be able to see it there. Here we go. And then you're going to score this and score from here to my corner. Here we go. Okay, now we're going to reinforce that again. Oops. This and this. I like to fold it facing me this way, so then I know it's very straight. Now what you're going to do is you're going to fold and fold up. Fold and fold up. And I like to use my bone folder and reinforce this this way, flip it the other way, and reinforce this. Anytime you make a 3D item, um, the folding make the difference. It make the difference meaning that it's going to make the, the card, the box, whatever it is, the 3D, to really take position where it should be. So now I reinforce everything. And now this here is going to go down, in, down, in, here we go. So this is the way it should look like here, facing down, okay? Before we're going to glue this though, let me share how I cut my paper. I kind of, uh, if you notice, my paper inside get bigger outside there in but because it's inside you don't really see it so I figure with a piece of cardstock so the designer series paper New Horizon comes six by six so we can do with one sheet we can do one of our box let me share how I cut this you're going to cut this at five and a quarter I took more of the sky out, depend which print you're going to use, you're going to decide, you know, which side, what you want to remove. Or you can use regular, whatever, regular designer seal paper, but for this year, that's how I done it. I'm going to go at five and a quarter and cut this. And this year, I'm going to use it in the back of my card to add an embellishment at the top, kind of. Now you're going to flip this and you're going to go at one and three quarter. Let's measure, I didn't mark that down, and let me measure to make sure. Yeah, so we're going to cut this end at one and three quarter. Now, I don't want to cut another one at one and three quarter. I need this side so it's going to flow together. So let's lift this up. I'm going to flip it and cut it at one and three quarter. Now, see? It still flow together. One and three quarter, one and three quarter, and then the center it's a two and a half. And really, if I want to cover the box inside and just have the nice surrounding, it would be two and three quarter. If you use a, di a different type of paper, that it's more than six by six. Okay, so you would cut it at two and um two and three quarter by five and a quarter like here this is done here and I think she even have a smaller surrounding okay now let's glue this I like to use liquid glue when I do a project that 
uh, need to be precise kind of when I glue my pieces so that way if I'm not right the first time it gives me the chance to move it around so now I'm going to take this put that right here on one of the panel facing me this one don't do nothing okay because that's going to be the side of the box and we don't really see it did I mix you want to make sure you use the right one, you know, that you follow your pattern. It don't really matter, though. I That nitpicky, I would say. Because uh, you really would have to pay attention to see if it flow. But while we get the chance, we might as well do it, right? And now let's lift this up. Here we go. And we're going to put that here. Yeah, this one I have to pay attention because, you know, it's not that easy border on the side there. It's a little bit bigger, so I just have to make sure it's in the center. Voila. Now we're going to cut um, glue our little strip on each side. So this here you're going to fold at each score. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my glue here. Hold this. Okay, I'm just going to hold that there a bit. Now we're going to do the other one. And here we go. Put this here. You want that to really be secure and the glue to dry because that's what's going to move the thing around. Okay, first thing, we're going to go ahead and, um, should I, yeah, let's glue the side. So for the side, what I'm going to do is just fold this, make sure it's right at the edge there. Sometimes you have to push a little bit. And then we're going to do both at the same time, okay? So this one, see, it's cockeye a bit, so I'm just going to go ahead and move that a bit there. Okay, so what we're going to do, is put our glue on the tab, you fold the tab in, and then we're going to close this, and that's what's going to keep it all together. I like to do both sides at the same time. Usually I would do one side and then, then do the other side. In this case, it's different because it's the way that the box go. So, you know, you cannot do one side because it's going to pull up. This is going to lift the side up. So I like to do both sides at the same time. So just put your finger here and here. Take this. Close this. And then come here. And this. Now... You want to put the pressure on this so it's really going to bond together. So while this is bonding here, I'm going to show what else I prep. So I pre uh, color the A Chick uh, Berthe. So I use those three, the three bigger ones. And for this one, I color less. And what I mean by I color less, it's this one I just color with the gray and it's all using the blends because my chicken here didn't pop enough so I thought well white's going to be better and this is about the same and then this one also about the same with the yellow so I just mix any color I mean I just whip the blends I even put some blue in the airs and uh, the air and then the tail, whatever you like. The balloon, it's Bermuda Bay. Now, for the happy birthday, here's what I done. Need a scrap paper here. I cut that, and that's again, it's from the A Chick, it's all from the same one. And I put that in so saffron. I am using, um, well, first, let's start with the darker one that it's light calypso. So I'm going to go ahead and, oh, this thing is shot. Okay, I got the light calypso here. Just do one row. 
then I am using the light pumpkin pie. And then I'm going to use the light so sap oh the dark so saffron sorry the dark and then so that I got like that ombre look to it voila is that cool very very simple to have that ombre look now for the uh, let me think here. The clouds, because we're going to put the clouds on top of one of this. Uh, if I would be a cloud, I'm right here. So the clouds, that's the punch cloud. So I punch that with very vanilla. And I use the Time Worn Type 3D embossing folder. I want a texture on my emboss, uh, on my clouds, and I didn't want a uniform texture neither. Well, this is the winner here. So I just place, and someplace you get words. So I place like here. Just play around where you're going to place it. I went with where you get like light and so on. Boom. And emboss them. I'm going to need four of them. If you do the belly band, you need three for the belly band and one for the greeting. So we're going to go ahead and glue our greeting to one of the clouds here we go and that to be honest if I would have been smart I would have used the adhesive sheet on the happy birthday oh make sure I'm got it on the right side and first I was like what am I going to use because I didn't like I should have show you I didn't like the happy birthday directly on this it didn't show good and um, I didn't know what to use on the banner because I wanted to keep my chicken there and boom the cloud jump at me and that's exactly what I needed so now see now it's glue good so that's you want to make sure that you give it the chance to really your glue to dry before you start pulling and so on it's going to be the same with this but this it's can we can wait a little bit whatever oh what did i do here i think i missed a score line here i'm gonna have it on i sure did miss a score line so you're supposed to score at Oh, okay. You score at one and a half, two, three and a half, and four. And I forgot to score at the three and a half, so I just bend it now. So I will have that. So again, your strip measure um, four and a half by half, and you score at one and a. Here we go. You score at one and a half. Score at two. Score at three and a half and four. So you get your little bits and pieces. Voila. And I forgot to score at the three and a half. But we got it. Now, you're going to put glue. This is very important. You're going to put glue on. I like to put where you get the piece that mounted. You're going to put glue there. And you're going to put glue on one side. That's it. The one side going to face the side of the box. So I'm going to go right here and fold it down. Voila. And I think it can even be more there. Let me make sure it go on the side. Here. Voila. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with the other one. This one, though, I want to make sure that my happy birthday fit at the top. So you want to see about where. So the best thing for that is to glue your happy birthday with your cloud first. Because you want it as high as possible for your balloon of the chick there. So put that right at the edge there. Okay, so the edge on the end of your happy birthday, that's where you need the glue and in the back. 
So you're going to put your glue here and then over here. So whatever shape you put at the top, you want to make sure that it fit on, you know, inside. So that's why this one here, I would glue it first. The one over here, as long as you know it's not as taller than the box, you're good. Now I'm going to come here. Right here, here we go. Here we go. Now we're going to hold that there a bit for you. Want it the glue to bond and dry a bit before you start pulling because anytime that you get an interactive card, you want to make sure that it's bond good. If voila, now it's working. Now it's pretty much over. So what I done, this chicken here, I use a dimensional. And the reason I get dimensional on this one, it's to give place for the other one to slide. So you want to put your dimensional just on the, in the back on the right side. Okay. Now we're going to remove this. You cannot pass the edge of this because that's where the envelope. Now this one here, no dimensional because that would make it too thick to close the box. So the easiest one, the easiest way for that, it's to put your glue on the strip in the bottom of your card there. Now you're going to take this. And then I'm going to make it bond over there. Now, the, this one here, I put it down. Okay, so that directly down. And the reason, it's going to slide under this one when you fold it. Because <clears throat> it needs to slide someplace, right? So I'm just going to put a bit on the body, a bit on the head. N don't put glue more past there. And remember, what's important it's that you don't pass the edge of the card so now this can slide under it's just a little bit that slide but you need that little bit okay if voila oops this it's cockeye a little bit let me oh it's still go let me make sure yep it's closing so now for the banner remember we score at two it's going to go here. Now, that is where I say I rather, um, oh, and I already had scored. That's okay. It's going to work. I rather, instead of scoring at, like, I think Don did at six and a half, I rather bring mine and go at the top and then press it because you want it loose enough that it slides, but not too loose that it's going to fall off. And um, the reason for that, it can play a factor, depends the thickness inside your box. Now I just put the end, the end. So face up, face in here. Now I'm going to close this and I want to align this together, the edge. Now I'm going to, again, you want to hold this because this is liquid glue. It, dry fast but not that fast so you want to hold it that it's stick now you're going to take your clouds and i'm going to go ahead put that there put that there and usually i would say you know okay we get enough dimension we don't want to put more dimensional because it's gonna you know it won't male friendly in this case, I say we already over our thickness, I think, to mail regular. Go ahead, the top one, to give some dimensional depth of the clouds. Put a dimensional there, and then boom. How about that? So now this just slide. Et voila! Is that fun? And it stands perfectly. So in the back, I'm going to add a piece of um, vanilla cardstock. 
and I'm going to stamp the happy birthday. You're still... Uh... Okay, I'm sorry. The battery went out. Something happened. So what I was saying, in the back, I'm going to add the piece of cardstock of very vanilla and stamp another chick and put let's celebrate you, something like that. All measurements will be on my blog and also um, all the supplies that I use. The direct link, it's right below. Thank you, Don, for inspiring me with this. And uh, till next time, happy stamping, everyone. Bye-bye for now.